everyone. Loving living purposely here. Thank you so much for clicking play on your device. Thank you so much for being here. I love your loyalty. I love you for being here. Thank you. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful day, as I said. And today is a very, very special day. I got to thank Valley Views, Hector, especially Hector, for thinking of me and saying, hey, Karen, join us. So today I'm taking you guys with me to the Hola Mexico Film Festival. Yes, we are going to watch El Guardian de las Monarcas. I love butterflies. So it's very, very special. I'm dressed by Mirinda as well. So I'm super excited. Stay tuned. I have a special date coming with me. My partner can't come, can't come with me today. So um, I'm taking someone very, very special with me. Stay tuned so you can see who's coming with me. And I'll be showing you guys around. Thank you so much. See you guys soon. Stay tuned. So we knew we had to go back there and film that because we made that hard date just for ourselves. Um, and, uh, and sort of metrics became an interesting time. So we used that as a way to pressure them to fund the film and just to and let us and make it happen. So it kind of all worked out red in the film uh, arena, which is great. And uh, so, so then the, the movie premiered in a uh, festival or it was straight to Netflix or what was the story of the film? straight to Netflix, they wanted to, because it was political season in Mexico, and because some of the uh, politicians involved in the in the interviews are one, polit one political party, they didn't want to, uh, to ruffle too many feathers and make it seem like we were doing like, uh, like a political attack on, on, on the Mexicans, white men, which we sort of were. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so they hurried up and, and, and made sure to do this so that way and kind of make a big festival event. And then you, did you, did someone call you and said your film is number one or how, what <laughs> happened and how did the film become so big? It just, it, it evolved, you know, like I think it, it's funny because one of the, one of the things that a lot of uh, like big film companies tell you when you want to tell a story about human rights or, or nature is that nobody um, or it's like a small, it's, it's a niche audience. But we, when you start seeing the conversations online happening, people being angry, you know, newspapers picking up the story, there are protests, uh, they don't, we spotlighted Los Escados, which is sort of like one of his rare films. Uh, so we pointed a lot of fingers at them with that choice. So it's like a very Mexican thing. It's like, So it did have some repercussions, but we're here, we're alive, we're happy, we're here, and, and, and LA shown the, the, the film, so nothing bad happened. Um, but I think we made a lot of people uncomfortable, which was sort of, uh, sort of the whole point. Let's see questions for the Emiliano, who's here all the way from Mexico to answer. I'll be happy if I see a lady with a hand. Indirectamente fuimos amenazados, sí, varias veces durante la filmación y después, pero nada serio. O sea, eh, sabíamos que... ¿Puedo responder en inglés o en español? Okay. Okay. Sabíamos que la cobertura iba a protegernos. La, la preocupación principal era la familia, que no le pasara nada a la familia. Y queríamos que le pasara algo, no violento, pero Basically, what I'm saying is that our hope was that none of the family was harmed, so we were very careful with uh, the information we let we filtered into the documentary. 
some things are kept out um, to protect them. And our hope was that somebody would get fired and this is Kelly Hill. <laughs> right? That was the whole point. Somebody did get fired, so we were happy about that. And, uh, and they said they would reopen the investigation. Of course, in Mexico, there's a lot of uh, uh, sort of like uh, diplomatic postures mm -hmm. that don't necessarily translate into action. So we have to see if, if, if the case actually ever, uh, ever advances. But those were good results. Thank you. So, like the photo, the, photo, the photography is uh, the photographer is Javier Pinilleda, which is great. The photographer, as well as some of the nature work, is Nicholas Donnelly from National Geographic. So, I think one of the one of like the main uh, one of the main things that drove us was sort of the rhythm of the butterflies, uh, and we had like a lot of discussions about the aesthetics. And as if you think of an insect that lives for six months and crosses 400,000 mm -hmm. kilometers to return to the same tree yeah. that its forefathers did. You think of, I mean, that's that's something I couldn't achieve in a whole lifetime, right? Mm -hmm. So it was, the idea was like, so how do we show an insect in like a human way? And the, the sort of the, or how do we anthropomorphize something so incredible? Because most people find insects despicable or absolutely un, you know, usual. Sort of playing, playing with their dimension by using macro lenses and phantom cameras to slow down time. And so that sort of informed the rest of the rhythm of the documentary. And also a lot of the people live in that region. Thank you. Yes. Um, todos sabemos que, el, que la película, el documental, perdón, ha tenido muchísimo éxito. Eh, podemos esperar un documental número dos para poder saber si, si esa investigación que sigue abierta pero que no ha avanzado eh, se puede dar seguimiento o como, like you said, you know, to make people uncomfortable, but at the end of the day, we're trying to make justice for the family, I think, right? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think we would do another documentary, but I do hope um, that uh, the issue is resolved. I think, creo que una de las secundarios es que sí se siente más protegida la familia, tienen más relación uh -huh. y recuperaron el legado de Homero. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, after Homero's death, there was a lot of uh, kind of misinformation uh -huh. about the circumstances surrounding his death. Uh -huh. And I think that was sort of like a double tragedy oh, because yeah. not only was the investigation carried out in a like wrongfully, yeah, a really superficial uh -huh. manner, but also his legacy was tarnished mm -hmm. by a lot of the information and speculation mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. his, the circumstances surrounding yeah. his death. Mm -hmm. So I thought, at least that's the way the family externalized it to me, and I think they just want to be left alone. I see. Well, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. So uh, a big part of this documentary was working with local uh, periodistas and uh, journalists. Mm -hmm. And you know, in a, these places are so off the map. They're not really covered at a national level often, uh, which is sad. Um, but the, the local news sources are like at the, you know, at the forefront, especially in Mexico, they're like, you know, uh, like conflict journalists their lives, they know, they have all the contacts, and they're um, really the best way to approach even the Fiscalia. Silvano, I have to be honest, I'm surprised that he said yes to this. <laughs> it's the trap, right? Politicians are politicians. So he thought, maybe I'll get some, you know, I'll get my face on, on, a, on Netflix, or this will help me promote. It just shows you how, how desperate um, kind of the political sector is. ingratiate themselves with like cinema and, and, and documentaries and media.
but uh, but that was the one that surprised me the most. <laughs> and and Karina Alvarado uh, was one of the last people who saw it alive. She gave us a free interview, right? So there's a lot of sort of uh, a lot of conflict after the movie about whether we were pointing our fingers at Betty or not. And um, it's I obviously don't think that Karina had any direct. Um, involvement in the Milenium death, but I do think that if you're a politician, if you're in the public sector, right, or if you're uh, a public personality, and somebody's asking you for uh, for your testimony, you have to give it. Um, so or face the consequences. Um, and since she was in such an important position, she had. She met Omer on his last night, and she refused to answer any questions from the family. I think it was important for us to, um, to mention the fact that she refused to be um, she refused to be interviewed. I don't know if that was the right choice because there were a lot of repercussions on social media against her. So you have to question your choices as a filmmaker. But I do think, in general, um, if you're and you are involved. Let's say that in English. Yeah. Um, yes, 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 I'll translate very quickly. So the question was, how was your, uh, your feelings during the movie? Would something affect you personally? And he said, the main thing that affected me was when I was interviewing the family and they told me that the, the police, instead of starting to find out what happened and try to get the people that did it, they started uh, thinking that the family did it themselves. So that was very, very hard for, for him personally. Yeah, no, I, they obviously knew that the family had been through it, but they want them to keep investigating. So it's a, it's a way of kind of, um, you know, putting a plug in the, in the mm -hmm. and, and kind of getting them out Intimidation. Of yeah, exactly. Y la, y la segunda pregunta de los documentales mexicanos, pues yo creo que hay una historia de documentales mexicanos uh -huh. que, que vienen como parte de esta tradición de, pues, de narración de ciudades, de tiempos rebeldes y revolucionarios. Y, o sea, yo que, creo que eso no ha cambiado. Yo creo que siempre ha existido en México. Hay ahora plataformas que las distribuyen a más gente, pero esa historia en México.
It's, it's so complicated, right? But that's like a big challenge. That's what I think you have to try and squeeze all. There's a lot of defenders of land in mm -hmm. Berkeley that are that are working towards a dense. Okay. Last question over there. Yeah. This is my date. My date. <laughs>